Welcome to StatsNet. Today's presentation is Interpreting Stability Regression for ICH Q1E. Today's presenter is Laura Pack. Laura has leveraged her scientific and statistical expertise to drive innovation in biotechnology across operations functions for the past 19 years. Throughout her career, Laura has focused on supporting clinical, late stage, and commercial biologics and small molecule programs. She is passionate about teaching statistics to the many dedicated scientists that she encounters in the CMC community. Laura currently leads the CMC statistics functions at Resolute, where she partners with scientists across CMC functions to integrate statistical thinking into everyday decision making so that the company can advance important medicines through clinical trials. Laura, the floor is yours. Thank you. Today's stats snack will show how to graphically determine expiry based on a regression line as prescribed by ICHQ1E. Today you will learn how to determine a product's dating period by examining a plot of a stability regression fit and when to use a one-sided confidence bound versus a two-sided confidence interval. This plot shows stability data for lot A and a fitted regression line which represents the predicted mean of the individual points as defined in the figure legend. The regression line, or the line of best fit, has a simple linear equation. We all learned in grade school the y equals mx plus b notation, and I still think of it this way. So in words, that's the response equals slope times time plus intercept. The statistician will more specifically write the line's equation in a model format as shown here, where the predicted mean of y equals beta 1 times time plus beta naught plus an error term. Note that we've now added that error term to all of the equations. So why an error term? Since the line of best fit minimizes the amount each individual point deviates from the line, there is uncertainty in the estimation of the line. So it is very important that we add the error term to the equation to represent this uncertainty. Since we know there's uncertainty in the estimation of the regression line, a confidence bound can be calculated to quantify that uncertainty. A very important point, especially for people who are new to looking at stability data in this way, is that the confidence bound is on the line, not the individual points. So this means that the line can be as extreme as the region shown by the confidence bound. But this also means that the points are expected to fall outside of the confidence bound, especially as the data set grows and the uncertainty decreases. I've estimated the mean regression line for lot A based on the information shown in the plot. The regression line is extrapolated to 24 months, which is six months beyond the last time point tested. This line says that my best guess based on the information I have to date puts the mean at around 99.3% at 24 months. If I add a point for the measurement at 24 months, the estimate will change, but the line will probably remain within the previously calculated confidence bound. Okay, so the regression model is really all the math that is required to support or establish the dating period, again, meaning retest or expiry date, depending on the product type and manufacturing stage. To determine the dating period, we superimpose the stability specification acceptance criterion and either ensure that the confidence bound doesn't intersect the acceptance criterion before the claimed dating period, or we set the dating period at the earliest point of intersection. In this figure, that looks to be at around 22 and a half months. For a product with multiple attributes measured on stability, the attribute with the shortest dating period sets the overall retest or expiry date. If there are multiple lots in the data set, a model is fit that accounts for these various lots, which will be the subject of another Stats Snacks video. Up to this point, the example in this video has shown a one-sided 95% confidence bound compared to a lower stability acceptance criterion. 
ICHQ1E specifically states that when data for an attribute with only an upper or a lower acceptance criterion are analyzed, the corresponding one-sided 95% confidence bound for the mean is recommended. And then in examples for attributes with upper and lower specification acceptance criteria, a two-sided 95% confidence interval is applied. Why? The choice between a one-sided 95% confidence bound or a two-sided 95% confidence interval has to do with which possible values of the mean I'm interested in. This translates to where the area under the curve is allocated during the confidence bound estimation. So for this one-sided attribute, I'm looking for a value above which 95% of the possible predicted values will fall. Therefore, the assumed distribution of possible values only needs to account for uncertainty in one tail of the distribution, and all 5% of that uncertainty is allocated to the appropriate tail. For the two-sided attribute, I need to account for uncertainty in the predicted mean on both sides of the distribution. So I allocate half of the 5% total uncertainty to each end of the confidence interval, meaning that two and a half area percent of the area is in each tail. Note that for a one-sided attribute, my dating period will be shorter if I use a two-sided 95% confidence interval versus allocating all 5% of the uncertainty to the appropriate tail. So using a one-sided bound for a one-sided acceptance criterion ensures the longest possible dating period because I've correctly allocated the error to the right tail of the distribution. That concludes today's stat snack on interpreting stability regression per ICHQ1E. For further information on the concepts discussed in this video, refer to the guidance in ICHQ1E. Thank you for joining us today for Stats Snacks. Please connect with us on the AAPS CMC Statistics Community and look for more Stats Snacks videos coming soon.